is that the world will be commemorating World Press Freedom Day. It is a day set aside to celebrate the principles of press freedom, assess its state th uh, throughout the world, uphold media independence, and pay tribute to journalists who have paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. The theme for this year's commemoration is Media for Democracy, Journalism and Elections in Times of Disinformation. All right, joining me now to discuss how to tackle uh, the issues around press freedom and maybe even issues of fake news is an assistant professor of broadcast journalism, Howard University, United States, Professor Jennifer Thomas. It's good to have you join me. Thank you. And welcome to Nigeria. Thank welcome you. to TVC. Thank you, Amani. All right, um, you have over 25 years of experience. You have been, you've worked with CNN and so many other uh, broadcast, international broadcast organizations. Checking all of this, how much, of, how much has broadcasting changed over time? Well, broadcasting has changed um, a lot, primarily in the way that we convey the information. So when I first started in the industry, we had our typical newscast, morning, afternoon, and evening. Fast forward now today, we consume news in so many different ways. Before, when we sat in front of that big box, now we all have that small box in our hands. <laughs> and so we're- And it's changed everything. Yes, it's changed <laughs> every way, including the way that we uh, present the news, uh, research the news, and the way consumers receive the news. So, so how, how has technology, inventions, and use of apps, social media, how, are, how have they all shaped the media? Well, I think, yes, uh, through convergence, it's changed the way in which consumers get their information. And now we're living in a day and age when people want to have instant access to information. And we know that something is sent out through a tweet or something is on Facebook or something is sent out so fast, sometimes there's not enough time to even check the accuracy. Uh, so the drive to be first uh, sometimes stands in the way of the drive to be accurate or correct. So we have uh, that instantaneous access that we have through social media and mobile apps, but it also allows us as journalists to get our news out there in different ways. So we can do extended interviews, we can do Twitter polls, we can, you know, have various ways to get our information. All right. Out. Here in Nigeria, we have the situation where a lot of people work as reporters, a lot of people work as news anchors and different things within the journalism profession who have never really had formal training as a journalist or formal training as a media person. Do do you have that kind of scenarios in the United States? Uh, maybe not as frequently and not as much. Many journalists may not necessarily go to school for journalism. Mm. They may go for political science or English or some other areas. But um, I've had the pleasure of spending the last two days with 19 journalists from across Nigeria wow, wow. to do media training. And I learned a lot from many of them. <laughs> uh, so I think that, you know, once we get into the industry, um, if you have that passion and thirst for knowledge and getting information out, there's some things you can learn on the job, but I think having, you know, that base, education base can never hurt. All right. We, we, we celebrate or commemorate the World Press Freedom Day every year and all of that, but how free really is the press? We know the United States benefits from the First Amendment, you know, mm -hmm. and all of that, but how, mu how, mu how free is the press from your assessment and what you see, especially currently in the United States? Um, in the U.S. particularly. So I think the uh, press freedom and the reasons that we have a free press are more vital now than ever. And many would say that um, a lot of things that have happened recently in the past few years have tried to suppress our role. Uh, and that's something if there's a museum in Washington, D.C. called the Newseum. And in there, there's a place where um, there's a whole wall about world press freedom. And for the first time ever, the U.S. was noted for um, journalists being suppressed, where in the past that was never the case. So to me, that just stresses the need for us as journalists, because we're there to be a voice for the voiceless and hold the government accountable. Um, and there's a reason that we're called the fourth estate. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now uh, I'd like to ask a question which has to do with the debate about uh, TV and radio going obsolete very soon because uh, <laughs> 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 it's a big advent, debate. Yes, yes. Of the yes. Advent, <laughs> advent of the new media. How yes. concerned are you about this? Well, I'm somewhat concerned, but in a way not. And that's because of convergence. And yes, a lot of people are saying, you know, the news is going away. But when we see things like political events, or breaking news, the first thing people do is they want to tune in to their TV sets. And I think some sales of uh, digital, 
assets are um, on the rise. So people are still consuming news in that traditional way. But I think one of the blessings of Convergence is now they can watch just like us, watch on <laughs> Facebook Live, yeah. you know. So we can use that technology um, and the way Convergence has shaped the field by using it to get our information out there. So I think we just have to be smart because if we think about after World War II when people started watching television, um, at least two in the US, everyone sat around. And before that, they sat around and listened to the radio. And that's just changed how we're getting that information. So I think we have to keep up with the times, but be smart about how we get our information out there. That's All right, a, a lot of people have become concerned about uh, the, the, the relation between the media and the government. Mm -hmm. And they say the less, the less trust relationship the media has with the government, the more suspicion somewhere and yeah. all that. What's your concern about that? Well, I think traditionally, um, I could speak to the, in the US, mm. there's never been like a joyous relationship <laughs> between the media and the press because okay. we have that excess, others don't, as you know, to be in that space where we can ask the questions on behalf of the public. And a lot of times there's a natural pushback. And in the US, for um, just about every president, uh, has never had a great relationship oh, yeah. with the press because they're asking those questions and holding them accountable. Holding them accountable, which mm -hmm. is uh, one of the number one roles of, of the, the media. Yes, absolutely. All right. I wonder if you've tasted some very good Nigerian delicacies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Like the donuts right now. <laughs> and I've been, I so I've, I arrived, I've just been here for, this is my third full day, right. but I have had vegetable soup. Oh, great. Oh. Is it moi moi? Oh, yes. nice. oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've had fried rice and the other rice, but I was told. Yeah, jollof rice. Jo yes. Jollof rice. And I was told not to even get into the debate about who's is better. <laughs> All right. Nigerian or Ghana, okay. I might start a world war with that. But they were, they were, everything has been delicious. Oh, it's great, yes. it's great, yes. it's great. Yes. Professor Jennifer Thomas, thank you so much for coming in thank to me. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having right, me. Thank you. All right.